Kelly, I'm going to be the. the... Are we ready, Jean? Yeah. Uh, welcome everyone to uh, the Puget Sound Regional Council's uh, training for our regional priority ranking process for the 2023-2025 Washington State DOT Consolidated Grant Competition. Uh, this is a regional priority ranking training for the Puget Sound Regional Council's region, uh, consisting of King, Pierce, and Snohomish counties. At this point, I'll turn things over. Oh, and, and I just as a uh, reminder that you see the this is a webinar format training, so you see uh, the general meeting procedures on the uh, screen right now. Attendees are in listen-only mode during the meeting. Uh, please use your question and answer icon to uh, ask questions at any point during the, the uh, presentation. However, we are planning to go through the presentation, which should take no more than 30 minutes, and then we'll have plenty of time for uh, answering questions at that point. Uh, at this point, I will, uh, and I guess last note, last note is that we uh, the meeting is being recorded and part of the public record. Uh, at this point, I'll, I will introduce Jean Kim, a senior planner with the Puget Sound Regional Council. Uh, take it away, Jean. Thank you, Gil. Um, just another reminder, um, the video recording of today's training will be um, posted to uh, the PSRC website um, later this week, and the link will be provided to um, all the training attendees, um, as well as the PSRC Special Needs Transportation Committee mailing list. Um, so today, um, we will provide a um, training on the PSRC region's regional priority ranking process for the state consolidated grant program. And here is the outline uh, for today's training. So we will provide an overview of the PSRC role in WASHDOT consolidated grant process. And I'll also provide a detailed schedule of our regional priority ranking process and um, the factors associated um, with this process for PSRC staff review. And towards end of this presentation, um, we will open up um, the floor for questions and answers, as Gil mentioned. So let's dive in. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with this grant program, um, the consolidated grant program is managed by the Washington State Department of Transportation, WASHDOT. And this program um, provides funding for transportation improvements in communities, um, bus or other equipment purchases, and transportation services to people with mobility challenges. Um, this funding program also funds non-operational projects like planning or mobility management activities in our region. Um, the state uses the consolidated process for each project um, selected to be funded, and the state assigns um, the state and federal funds to those eligible projects. Um, the state funds include rural mobility grant program, paratransit um, special needs grant program, and the federal funds include uh, Section 5310, Enhanced Mobility of Seniors and Individuals with Disabilities, um, Section 5311, Formula Grants for Rural Areas, and Section 5339A, Bus and Bus Facilities um, Infrastructure Investment Programs. Um, and eligible applicants include nonprofits, tribes, public agencies, public transit agencies, um, and local agencies in the Washington State. And for more information, please visit the Washington State Department of Transportation Consolidated Grant webpage. Link is provided in um, the slide here. And from this slide, uh, we will deeper dive into our region's regional priority ranking process. Um, but before that, um, to clarify, PSRC plans for four counties um, in central Puget Sound region, including King, Kitsap, Pierce, and Snohomish counties. However, for the consolidated grant process, um, Kitsap County participates through um, the peninsula RTPO, Regional Transportation Planning Organization. So when we say PSRC region for the consolidated grant, um, they are King, Pierce, and Snohomish counties. So three counties are out of our four planning um, county region. Um, for the consolidated grant, um, as a Metropolitan Planning Organization, MPO, PSRC has a role in providing um, regional priority rankings for projects in our three county region um, that seek uh, funds uh, through the state consolidated grant program. 
and how it works. Um, so WashDOT, the state allocates the fixed number of regional priority rankings to MPO or RTPO like us, PSRC, um, to each region and the regions distribute the, the fixed number of rankings to projects in the competition. Um, and typically A projects get the highest chance of being funded um, and B or C projects get lower um, chances of being funded compared to the A rent projects. Um, and the points associated with each ABC ranking are added to the statewide evaluation um, process. So what PSRC essentially does is um, to assess the projects in our region that best meet the regional priorities um, and allocate the ABC um, rankings, working with the stakeholders and help the state, our um, state partner, WashDOT, to fund those programs. We can also allocate um, the unlimited number of D rankings that is worth zero points to be considered for uh, the review. And our region um, always had to distribute the D rankings because we had more projects applying for this grant program um, than we, the available ABC rankings um, to allocate. And for this process, all applicants seeking um, funds in the PSRC region must submit the same application to both WashDOT and PSRC for regional priority ranking. And for the upcoming biennium, um, our region has a total of 15 ABC rankings, including five A's, five B's, and five C's. Um, and the project can apply for either two-year or four-year, and the four-year projects will um, receive the same ranking for the first and the second biennium. And for more um, information on the eligibility for two year versus four years, um, please visit the WashDOT website or reach out to your community liaison for your county. Um, and compared to the last um, biennium, uh, we are expecting more applications for um, the upcoming um, round um, because of one additional funding um, will, it will be available for the upcoming biennium and two uh, major projects funded for four years um, will come back to our region uh, to continue their services this time. And this slide provides a visual um, of the process that I mentioned um, in the previous slide. And I'll walk you through um, this chart to better explain uh, how we conduct the regional priority ranking process step-by-step -step. So the PSRC's um, role is highlighted in um, the teal colored boxes. So both WashDOT, Washington State Department of Transportation and PSRC released call for projects materials last month. So a little um, more than a week ago. So if you visit um, the PSRC website, you can download all the call for projects materials for the regional priority ranking process. And I'll cover that um, in later slides. So the PSRC um, region's applications um, have about three months to write and submit their grant applications, um, and they need to submit their applications to both WashDOT and PSRC uh, by 3 p.m. on October 27th. So the applicants uh, will use um, the state grants management system, GMS, for applications, and they will submit applications to state by using the GMS. And they are also expected to submit the same application by exporting their GMS applications to PDF and send the PDF version um, um, to PSRC um, by email by the same date and time. So that's something to keep in mind. And um, in several slides, I'll walk you through how to export your application from GMS to PDF. So this is a screenshot of the GMS system. And if you've um, finished your application, you will see preview application um, button like this in blue color. And if you click that, you will have an option to print your application. So hit print 
and um, send to printer icon. And there you will get a pop-up window and you can set your destination um, to save as PDF. And if you hit save button there, you will get another pop-up window <laughs> and you can set um, the desired file location or you can also rename the PDF if necessary and then hit save. And then if you hit print, then it will um, save the PDF version of your application to your desired file location. Um, and um, the next step will be um, to be consistent with other um, PSRC's project selection processes um, and to learn more about each project. Um, PSRC has incorporated the sponsor presentation um, into the upcoming process. So this is the new step for this particular grant program, but for um, other PSRC's competitions, um, sponsor presentations really help the PSRC staff and the evaluation committee to better understand the projects. Um, here information um, not included in the present, not included in the application, and also provide a really great opportunity to ask any questions for clarification at um, this sponsor presentation session. So um, for the upcoming biennium, um, all project sponsors are required to provide a short presentation of less than 10 minutes um, and the special needs transportation committee members, the project matter experts in this field and PSRC staff will attend for Q&A to ask for more information um, about the projects and to clarify the information um, from the application. Um, currently, this session um, is scheduled to be held on November 16th, um, but the 16th is a placeholder for now, but depending on the number of applications we receive, we may adjust the date and time, and we are currently thinking of um, spending pretty much the entire day of the November 16th, um, but it could change to maybe two half days of that week um, based upon the volume of applications. So PSRC will reach out to the applicants to notify their presentation order, date, and time after um, we receive applications by end of the October. Um, and we will also use the information heard from um, the presentations um, for our assessment. So the next um, step will be the PSRC Regional Priority Ranking Recommendation Process. Um, here, the staff will review and assess the applications for how well the applications address the regional priority rankings, uh, priority factors by addressing the factors in their applications. And the staff um, will share the initial review result with SNTC, Special Needs Transportation Committee, um, a week prior to their deliberation meeting in December. Applicants are also welcome to attend this deliberation meeting um, in case the committee members raise questions um, about the projects during the deliberations. So this is the key um, process in um, this whole process um, and the deliberation meeting is currently scheduled uh, for December 6 from 9 to 2 p.m. So after that deliberation meeting, um, the SNTC voting members will make their recommendations for um, the PSRC's TOC, Transportation Operators Committee, um, and the board's review. The PSRC Executive Board will be uh, the final recommendation, will make the final recommendation on rankings in January. And all of the PSRC board uh, meetings are open to the public for their public comments. So after that process, um, PSRC will provide a final set of ABCs, the regional priority rankings to state, um, and state will conduct their own evaluation process and will work with uh, PSRC and other regions to make the final award decisions. Um, the awarded projects will be notified and can begin their projects in July of next year. And here is a timeline um, table with a little more details. 
So Watchdog released um, call for projects and NOFO notice of funding opportunity last month. Um, the application deadline is October 27th. And all applicants um, should submit PDF version of their GMS um, applications to PSRC by 3 p.m. Um, uh, of October 27th. And sponsor presentations are scheduled for November 16th. And the exact time and date um, will be updated based upon um, the number of applications received by the October deadline. December 6th, um, this is the key um, meeting in this process where SNTC, um, the subject matter experts, will meet and determine um, the, the rankings of the projects. So all the SNTC voting members uh, will meet um, and for, for deliberations um, on this date. And after um, PSRC's um, committee and board's review, the state will conduct um, their own um, evaluation process and announce um, the funded project list and send, will send out the award letters uh, the spring of next year. And July 1st is the date uh, that the funded projects can begin their service. So I just want to pause here to see if we um, have any questions received from the group. Thank you, Jean. Um, uh, this is Gil Cerise uh, uh, from PSRC. Uh, we do not have any questions or answers, uh, questions yet to answer. So uh, just as a reminder to anyone participating, there is a Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom screen, and that is what we're using for this webinar format. So if you have questions, please feel free to ask them at any time. Uh, we will uh, uh, stop and, and, and answer them at the end of uh, Jean's presentation. Thank you, Gail. So I'll move on to the next slide. So here, um, I'll provide a brief summary of the factors we are planning to use um, to review applications. Um, as I mentioned in my previous slide, applicants within um, the PSRC region are expected to address both the WASHDOT evaluation criteria and PSRC's regional priority ranking factors in their application. Um, the PSRC's ranking factors um, guidance is also posted on our website. And that um, document provides a crosswalk for applicants um, to help identify uh, where in the state applications to address each PSRC uh, factors. And these factors are really designed to help implement the coordinated mobility plan, um, the PSRC's version of the regional human service transportation plan, um, and the latest version of the plan, which was adopted in May of this year, is available on our um, plan website. Um, also, the factors are designed to provide a simple yes or no answers to simplify the review process. So a um, yes re response indicates that um, the project's application addresses the factor. And um, the no response um, indicates that a project application either doesn't address uh, the factor at all or doesn't adequately address the factor. So there are four factors um, we will use to assess the applications for this upcoming biennium. Uh, the first factor is project type. This factor supports um, existing specialized transportation projects uh, that provide safety net service over new or expansion projects. So this factor really helps um, sustain the existing projects to continue their service. And the only um, preservation and the capital projects that are supporting the existing programs at existing service levels will receive a yes. And new or expansion projects um, really will receive a no for this factor. The next, next factor is um, support for the coordinated mobility plan. And this factor um, is designed to help identify the projects addressing the plan's high prioritized strategies, um, and therefore uh, meeting the regional goals to improve um, the specialized transportation programs addressed in the plan. So um, in the plan, there is a list of prioritized strategies with two different priority levels, high, and other. 
and only the applications adequately addressing one or more high prioritized strategies of the plan will receive a yes. And applicants failing to adequately address at least one high prioritized strategy or only addressing other prioritized strategies will receive a no answer for this factor. So here is a screenshot of our current plan. So as you can see, under the mobility need number one, there are um, two strategies shown here. And you can see that the first strategy 1.1 is categorized as a high prioritized strategy. And the strategy 1.2 um, is categorized as other prioritized strategies. So this is something to really keep in mind that only the applications addressing the high prioritized strategies will receive a yes. And the applicants, applicants only receiving the, uh, only um, addressing the other prioritized strategies will receive a no for this factor. Um, and the next factor is uniqueness of service. This factor um, helps identify the projects that provide services in areas without uh, the similar transportation options available to the same um, population groups to really avoid unnecessary duplication in services. So um, the applicants um, that adequately explain the uniqueness of their services and how their projects do not duplicate um, other existing services for the same populations, um, including those provided by transit agencies, fixed route, demand response, or travel training will receive a yes response. Um, we often received um, the applicants that do not provide additional explanation or respond simply that there are no similar services um, and they will receive the type of response and the applicants receive a no for um, this factor. And financial sustainability, this is the last um, main factor we use for our assessment. And this factor helps identify um, projects that have the ability to provide more than the federal minimum required match from local sources in their project budget, um, and therefore are more financially stable, sustainable um, than those that are unable to provide uh, the minimum federal uh, required local match. So the operating projects seeking a federal and state funding amount less than the 50% of their net cost will receive a yes. And the capital and mobility management seeking the federal and state funding amount less than 80% of their net project cost will receive a yes for this factor. And this is the example um, of the table and the information we provide to SNTC Special Needs Transportation Committee prior to their um, deliberation meeting in December. Um, we will provide this type of information showing yes or no um, answer for each factor for each program um, applications. Um, then the SNTC members um, will use this as a resource and a starting point for their um, recommendation in December. Um, and I also want to remind everyone that um, the goal of this assessment is not to really give all the four yeses to all applicants, um, but the factors should really help at least uh, the sorting of the applications and um, be used as a helpful resource for the SNTC's deliberation. And in addition to the main factors, um, SNTC will have an opportunity um, to determine and use the additional factors to really reinforce the main factors um, and the regional priorities. So um, these factors cannot really duplicate the main factors I just described. Um, however, SNTC members can update, the, update their change, update or change um, the additional factors at their deliberation meeting uh, before they discuss the rankings of the projects. And this slide um, 
provides a list of additional factors we used for um, the last competition. And for the upcoming competition, we are also planning to add um, new factors, new additional factors, which are advancing equity or perform, perform, performance measures and targets factors uh, for consideration and deliberation. Um, so this is something to really keep in mind. Um, Gil, do we have any questions? Uh, we do, we do. So uh, if you'd like to pause right now, Gene, to answer them, uh, I guess the first one here is from Jonathan. And he's asking, is there a chance to move the awarding date which I think this is a reference to the, to the schedule you had where award, uh, funds are awarded on July 1st. He says many programs start budgeting their next fiscal year in May and would need to by then. Um, and I guess I, I'll just answer this as no, this is, uh, this is a state uh, uh, grant competition. The state's uh, biennial, uh, their, their bu budget year is, uh, starts July 1st, ends June 30th. So uh, that, is the, uh, that is when the awards happen. Uh, I mean, uh, awards will occur earlier and uh, uh, applicants will have a time to get their you know, contracts uh, set with the state and begin their service or, or be able to purchase vehicles and things like that after July 1st. But there is no um, ability for uh, changing and, and you can uh, inquire with WashDOT. This would be a kind of a WashDOT answer since it's their um, pro project. Um, the second question, Gene, is uh, from Mona Steele. Are the priority ranking factors for WashDOT and PSRC both on the application? Uh, yeah, great question, Mona. Thank you. So WashDOT posted their evaluation criteria on their website. Um, and as I mentioned, um, we developed our own factors for PSRC um, regional priority ranking process. And we are expecting the applicants to address both the WashDOT, the statewide uh, evaluation criteria and our factors in the same WashDOT provided application. Uh, that's just kind of a, a nuance, I think is really important to emphasize, Gene, that we, uh, throughout the years that we've been involved in this, our uh, stakeholders have asked us to not uh, have separate applications, not to have extra complexity with this project or this program. So we have asked them to, uh, to respond to both the state evaluation criteria, as well as those regional priorities that we are called upon by the state to address within the same application. So that is uh, what we've done in, uh, to try to make this as simple as possible. Uh, there are uh, some regional priorities and there's the state priorities and that you need to address both in there. So. Yeah. And our uh, regional priority ranking factors guidance will provide uh, more information on how to do that. So thank there's you for crosswalk. there's a crosswalk there, Gene. Right, that's right. So you can you can look at where we suggest to answer these questions within that crosswalk. Yeah. Thank you. And I'll move on to uh, next slide. We have a couple more slides left. So again, um, PSRC's call for projects materials um, are posted on our specialized transportation funding webpage. Uh, the schedule you will be able to download the schedule, um, regional priority ranking factors guidance that I mentioned just now, and population density maps by county, and um, the list of regions projects funded for the consolidated grant, grant in the past um, few years. Um, and here I'll show you uh, where to um, get and download those materials. If you visit the Specialized Transportation Funding webpage, you can scroll down to the section um, and then click each bar um, to download uh, any of the materials you want. So there it is. Um, we will provide a link to um, the chat box for everyone pretty soon. Oops. And just to recap the important dates for the PSRC region's regional priority ranking process. Um, application deadline is October 27 uh, by 3 p.m. Um, all the PSRC region sponsors must submit a PDF version of their application to me um, at jkim at psrc.org by the same date and time noted here um, on the slide. And we incorporated the new sponsor presentations um, to this process, which is currently scheduled for November 16th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. virtually. 
Um, however, um, depending on the number of applications, we may adjust the time and date um, and um, notify um, the applicants before um, the November 16th date. Um, the SNTC deliberation meeting for the 2023-2025 biennium is scheduled for December 6th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We will take periodic breaks <laughs> during this deliberation meeting. However, um, the SNTC voting members or the alternates of the voting members, if the voting member cannot make this date, should attend for recommendation. And I believe this is the final slide that provides our contact information and important um, links to our website. And uh, we will post this um, slide deck on our website, as well as the video recording of today's training for those who missed um, the training today. And I'll um, open up the floor for Q&A. Excuse me. Uh, uh, yes, Jean. Uh, Mariana Halfield has just uh, added a couple of uh, Responses to Jonathan's question about the beginning of the biennium and where funds are available. Uh, I'll just read them for those that uh, uh, can't see them. Uh, first response, Jonathan, uh, uh, the dates are firm and awards are determined after the legislature formally allocates the funds for the upcoming biennium. That should happen sometime in April or May 2023. If you're waiting for budget, budgeting based upon grant awards, you should be good to go. And the second response uh, from Mariana from uh, Washed Out. The July 1st date is actually the start of the biennium or when the award becomes accessible to use for your project. Please feel free to reach out to me directly if you need further information. Mariana Hannafeld, Washtenaw Community Liaison, Northwest Region, 425-777-0557. And she provides her email address as well. Thank you, Mariana. Um, do we have any other questions from the group? Uh, we do not, and so this is the end of our presentation. As uh, Jean mentioned, this is our um, our training on our regional priority ranking role within this larger state consolidated grant competition. We have this uh, webinar training for uh, from 10 o'clock to 11, so we have some time. We have about 30 minutes or so left over here. Uh, so uh, there's several people on the line here. Uh, we're going to wait for a while, and we'll see. I think, Jean, what we should do is if People uh, will let people ask questions, and if when people stop start dropping off or we run out of questions, we can end the webinar. But uh, while we have people here and we have questions coming in, I see some more showing up right now. So Davine uh, asks, do we have a clear definition of expansion? That's a great question. Um, so, um, and why yeah, we'll... Jean, would you mind moving back to the resources slide? That's the second question. Okay. So that will help. Uh, that was the second question. So we will. Sure. So go ahead and answer the question. Do we have a clear definition of expansion? Um, that's a great question. Um, and uh, we will also make sure to be consistent um, with our state partners in defining the expansion. Uh, Gil, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, we will um, review the application and determine if uh, the project provides um, higher level of service um, than the exist current um, program. We will um, and 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 if uh, the state and if state application um, shows as um, expansion in their application, we will um, make uh, we will um, <laughs> um, regard that. Um, project as an expansion project. Um, does it make sense? Gil, any, do you have anything to add? I'll, to... Add, uh, I'll add to that. And, and uh, um, I guess I can just, you know, what I'll answer is what we've traditionally talked about when we're, with respect to expansion compared to an existing program. And then like Jean said, we do work really closely with our partners at Washington State Department of Transportation. We, uh, we uh, take guidance from them. In the past, they've traditionally had, like they've allowed a certain amount of a percentage of of additional funding for um, some limited uh, level of additional um, service, that kind of a thing that's considered part of a, a existing project or existing program. Uh, so typically though, when we've talked about expansion, you're going to new areas, you're expanding a geographic area to a new neighborhood, a new part of a county or new area that's not been served currently. There's also expansion in terms of hours. If you have, an, if you, uh, have a service that is between eight and 5 p.m., 
uh, and you decide to add uh, evening hours till 10 p.m. or uh, things like that, that's an expansion. You have expanded additional service because oftentimes these aren't um, these are uh, demand response. Uh, services of, of vans and, and those types of things. So if you have uh, uh, more vans in there from an expansion project and you're and you're adding more uh, service to an area, uh, more more um, uh, employees serving, more vans, those types of things. Those are things that trigger this uh, uh, considered an expansion. And and uh, I would just have to admit that there's always a bit of a gray area there, and that's I think part of why our partners at the Washington State Department of Transportation had allowed for a certain percentage of grant increase for an existing program and still to be considered as part of an existing or sustaining uh, uh, program. And uh, so, Devin, please feel free to uh, follow uh, in the follow-up question if you uh, need some further clarification or you can follow up with Gene and I uh, afterwards. Yeah. Uh, we have another question here uh, from Alpana. Uh, he's asking, can you please, uh, tell us the eligibility to apply for the grants and their topics. And uh, uh, Gene, I might suggest that we um, talk about the um, uh, 5310, the Section 5310 funds eligibility a little bit, the kinds of projects that are allowed in there. Um, uh, some of these I think I'm uh, less familiar with, and I might direct Alpana to go to the Washington State Department of Transportation um, website for their consolidated grant and review. They have a more extensive eligibility um, uh, and information about the grant programs that are, are part of that. But uh, I think you talked about them very broadly at the beginning. So maybe you can kind of re remind of maybe both about like the different types of services and maybe talk a little bit about those 53, section 5310 for um, enhanced mobility and seniors and uh, people with disabilities. Sure, um, thank you for the question. So um, the transportation projects um, for rural communities or cities um, can be one of the, example of the transportation projects that can um, get funding for um, this from this grant program. So there are four different types of um, typical types of the um, programs that you can the state can fund um, with their state and the federal funds, including operations. Uh, so running the service capital um, for vehicles and other equipment purchases, mobility management, providing travel training or other um, information assistant type of services and planning programs. So um, there are the two or four um, categories of um, fund programs that you can be funded through this consolidated grant programs. Um, and the eligible applicants include um, nonprofits, tribes, transit agencies, and um, any local agencies in the Washington state. But as Gil mentioned, um, if you visit the Washington state Department of uh, Transportation um, Consolidated Grant website, you can find um, more information and resources uh, from their website. And Marianne Hannafeld, uh, Community Liaison from Washington State Department of Transportation, is very helpfully adding some resources as you speak, uh, Jean. So there's a couple of things I'll just note under, uh, kind of towards the bottom of the Q&A. Uh, she's provided a link to the consolidated grant information that I think uh, would be really helpful to that to the person who's asking the question as well as a, a short statement about uh, the consolidated grant um, uh, information that people can use. And uh, so that, uh, I think that covers it. Uh, I'll if you uh, have further follow-ups, please feel free to uh, type another uh, question. Um, I'll leave up Mariana's responses to Alpana at the bottom of the Q&A here for now. Uh, Barb Hunter from Pierce Parents is asking, if we applied last time for a four-year project, for uh, fiscal federal or state fiscal year 21 to 2025 and receive funding, do we need to reapply for 2023 to 2025 for the same project? Thank you, Barb, for the question. Um, the answer is no. If you are already um, eligible to receive a funding for four years um, and already awarded for four years, um, you don't have to reapply in the middle of your uh, four year biennium, you will receive the same ranking that you received for the first um, biennium. So you don't have to reapply and you can come back uh, in ten, after your 2023, 2025 um, competition, the funding ends. So hope that uh, provides an that answer. Like, that looks like that answered for her. And uh, basically, yes, that the project is is committed uh, for that four-year period, and and unless the state, uh, somebody at the state top contacts you, I think there might be some uh, circumstances under which uh, an applicant might be asked to reapply. 
but uh, uh, if you have not heard anything, I think that is um, then you're good to go. I'm going to close up uh, Mariana's replies here um, and, uh, and see if there's any other questions people have. We're getting a few people are starting to leave, but uh, so I think if people were answering questions, but if others have questions, please feel free to type them in. We're getting some people dropping off, Jean, so we might have uh, answered all the questions for this time. Great. Yeah, Bill gave back 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> well, to, oh. Just as I say that, we get a new a new question. So that, again, right. uh, yeah, uh, certainly as more questions come in and more people stay, right. we, we will stick with this, but uh, when we lose people, we will uh, we'll close this out. So uh, Jonathan asks, if we do have a grant through 2025, we can still apply for this as an expansion, correct? Mm. Uh, we can still play. Sure. Um, so I think that concept, uh, if I were to, uh, uh, if I understand what Jonathan's saying is uh, a person, uh, a organization has a grant, they've applied, they have a funding for four years, they applied maybe for sustaining their existing service. We talked about it, sustaining versus expansion earlier. The question seems to be, if, I, if I'm sustaining my service, I want to expand, whether it be to a new area, new hours, new, you know, those, all the different things we mentioned earlier. Can I apply for a new grant this time? And if, yes, the answer is yes, you can. It will be an yes. expansion uh, uh, grant and it would not receive the yes that we talked about on that first factor that Jean talked about. Yeah, but, but you can certainly apply for expansion. Yes. Yeah. Um, the second question, uh, Alpana asks, can you type the website on the chat to find out? Um, the website for the, um, for the, uh, Consolidated grant, I think, is, and I believe Jean has added that into the chat, uh, right? Uh, uh, the yeah, and I just also, yeah, shared leading to our um, cultural projects and materials just now. Okay. Again. So, yeah, now Jean has added both the uh, uh, link to the Washdot Consolidated Grant Competition uh, website, right? That was earlier. And then you've added it to our, our website as well. So, uh, yeah. that, those are both there. Uh, Casey asks, do we have do we have to choose whether we want funding for two years or four years? If we want four years, but would be okay with two years, is there a way to apply in that way? I don't think I'm understanding it correctly. Yeah. I, I and and Jean, I don't know the washout application very well uh, or as well as uh, maybe you do. So I, it sounds like there maybe uh, is there a place where you have to choose, or is there a place you can say either or? I guess in terms of that. Do I choose? Uh, I'm hearing uh -huh. Casey say we're interested in funding. We would ideally like to have for four years, but if not four, if four years can't be committed, can we get a, a, the funding for two years? Um, I think Washdot will determine the eligibility and uh, the final two years versus four years. Um, and we have Mariana on the call, so. Yeah. So maybe uh, just get directing Casey to reach out to Mariana uh, uh, Hannafeld. Uh, she provided her contact information earlier, and you can kind of uh, um, work through that question with her. Again, this is a, a state, um, a state determination and part of the, the state competition. So, yeah. Looks like we still have ten attendees. So uh, please, uh, if you're still hanging out with us, uh, please uh, let us know if you have a question. Uh, type something in the Q and A. Um, we will uh, stay on the a line of, for five more minutes or so here, and, and uh, give time back to people if if um, you don't have any more questions. And I will share our contact information from the chat. Great. So. Okay. Well, it looks like we can give back 15 minutes. 
All right, we have uh, about seven attendees. So uh, if, if uh, there's no other questions, we'll give we'll like one more minute and, and give a chance to somebody to finish typing. I don't, I can't tell if people are typing or not, but I'm assuming not. Uh, so mm -hmm. we can kind of uh, maybe give people back that additional 15 minutes here. Yeah, and as a reminder, we will post um, the presentation slides and the training uh, video recording um, um, later this week to our website. So thank right. you everyone uh, for attending the training um, and please reach out to me or Gil or Mariana uh, for any questions related to consolidated grant and the regional priority ranking process. And, Jean, and before, just, just as you're saying that, uh, we did get somebody finished typing. So Davine is asking, oh. is there a section that maps are graded? What was the question again? Is there a section that maps are graded? Uh, and I think maybe if I would interpret this, like uh, you mentioned maps at one point in that, and I know that we provide uh, countywide population density maps. I think what, what how else how else are maps incorporated and how are they graded? Um, uh, how are they used? And, and I don't think grading maybe is the right term, but they provide information to kind of uh, influence or, or understanding of the application, if, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Devine. So in the state um, application um, in your GMS system, um, you can find um, the section that asks for your service areas map. And there um, you can just post your um, service areas maps. And we are providing the countywide maps as a resource for our regional partners. Um, and I don't think um, the quality of the maps will be um, assessed or evaluated, graded. Um, but that will be used as a um, piece of resource and information for um, the reviewers of your application. And I would just add also completeness, right? So uh, an example of the of the of the population density maps, the state has typically requested that. I think they're still requesting it, right? A gene is part of their uh, requirements for the application must have a population density map, and uh, so we're providing that as a resource. But if you do not include it, it's an incomplete application. So if there's a map that's uh, requested as a, as part of a complete application. That's how it would be evaluated uh, in part, and then also it provides that information. So, all right. Well, thank you. I don't see any more questions, so I think we can close out. Um, uh, feel free, as Jean, Jean provided our contact information. So, thank you again for attending. But if there's any other questions coming up after this uh, webinar, please reach out uh, to Jean or myself. Thank you, everyone.